today. I am coming to you live outside in front of this beautiful body of water. I'm about a half hour outside of Fredericton on the St. John's River. Um, so for those of you that know the Canadian area, I'm, I'm out here um, enjoying its beauty. If you've never been to Eastern Canada, you need to come check it out. Um, for those of you that joined me last week, this is session two of five moves in five minutes. Last week, we did kind of a beginning introductory. Today, you'll notice I do not have my stool. So anyone working with me today, if you are dealing with poor mobility, you're dealing with restricted anything, please have your stool ready and feel free to continue joining me. But I don't want you pushing range of motion or pushing beyond uh, just because I'm doing something today. I, I always want to inspire you to progress further. But if, if you use the stool as part of your routine, you fatigue easily, uh, have that available. We're going to be at the intermediate level today. So you do require range of motion. We're getting down on the ground. Um, if range of motion does not allow, you can just continue with some standing or seated poses. So last week we covered some basic stuff. If you did not see uh, last week's session, you can go into any of the VIP or the main page and you can see the first set. Today is five moves in five minutes. Hi, Jonah uh, from Pennsylvania. Uh, and yes, if you're joining today and listening to me ramble, let me know where you're from. Um, you know, if, if there's any particular questions, I always leave some time at the end of my lives to let you drill me. Uh, please, if you do have questions, let's try and keep it to today's session. But if there's uh, other questions that you may have, I do have time at the end, um, especially if you're new to vibration plates. Some of the beginning stuff, like I say, I talked about last week. Um, hello, Stephanie from Vermont. And hello, Sandra from Minnesota. Thank Sandra Schultz, that's my sister's same last name. Um, so thank you for joining me. And as I said, I'm going to get away from the camera and my 50-year-old eyes will look back at questions here with my spectacles when we get through the workout. So uh, if you're just joining me um, for your first workout, you do not have to keep your face. Today I'm working out on a mini waiver. Uh, many of Life Pro's models offer oscillating motion. Oscillating is the side to side, like how you walk across the floor. I do all of my sessions in oscillating. It's the primary movement of these machines. And all of Life Pro's models offer oscillating. So if you prefer to use P1 or lateral or combo, the moves are universal, but there's a little bit more instruction on the oscillating side. So we're going to start with a very basic warm up. If, if you haven't been active regularly and you're just getting started for the first time, warming up is a good idea. You get yourself loose and limber so we can get to some more difficult things as this progresses. I'm going to set my machine at a mid to high speed. Um, if, if you're just starting out, you have this mentality you think you need to start low. Low speed on a vibration machine isn't your most comfortable option. That's about balance and stability. So if you're just working with a platform and you're new with it, start at a mid to high speed and bring your foot position closer. So you're always in control. When you're in the middle, you're moving the least. When you're standing wide, you're moving the most. If at any time you find the intensity is just a little bit too much for you, bring your foot position closer. Don't turn the speed down. So the first thing we're going to start with is some torso twists. So last week I, I did some pelvic tilts. The, the main goal of a warm up with the workout we're doing today, and this is move number one, is we want to warm you up in the core area. We want to get some range of motion in the in the hips and the thighs. And what a torso twist looks like, you're not twisting with the legs. You're just twisting as far as your range of motion allows at the hips. Hold for two to three seconds. Go the other way. Hold two to three. And I want you doing about five, six reps per side. If you want to be a little fancier and, and you're working with weights, feel free to add things to your arms. Okay. For those of you that have better range of motion and are looking for a little bit more action, we can extend this and I'm going to progress after a couple more to kind of a varying toe touch. So we're going to take the opposite hand and I want you to touch. Come back up, opposite hand, touch. Back to the hips, touch. Again, five to six reps of this per side. 
Okay. If you're dying already, pull up your chair. Okay. So you would perform each of these for probably about a minute, maybe two max. I know everybody wants to know durations. If you're super fit, you work out regularly, and the initial set of exercises is, is really not that challenging, repeat. Do two sets, three sets, depending on what works for you. I'm going to move this a little bit more. I want to make sure you see the machine. Now, as I said, we're going to be at a mid to high speed. I'm working slower so you can hear me on camera. The first set is we're going to work on some alternating lunges, and that's one leg and the other leg. What we're going to do with this one, you want to make sure the leg that's on the machine is straight up and down like a table. You don't want to be leaning forward past the toes. You don't want to be further back. You want to be straight up and down. With that back knee, if you're dealing with poor balance, widen up your stance with your back foot. If your feet are in a line like a balance beam, you might find your balance is a little bit thrown off. So just widen up that back foot. And if your range of motion allows, I challenge you to see how low you can get. If you can touch that knee to the ground, I'd love it. If you can't, just work within your own range of motion, keeping this leg good and straight. And I'd love to see three to five reps, depending on you, okay? And you're gonna find with your lunges, you've always got a weak side and you've got a strong side. So I'm doing my good side first, so I look good, but this is my weak side. This is my bad knee. And what you'll find with a lunge on the vibration plate, it's actually the back leg. It's kind of the rudder. So you'll find that it's carrying your weight. This is more stabilizing. So you might find that second rep a little bit harder. And again, just work within your own range of motion. Three. Notice I'm not coming all the way up. I just want you at about a mid lunge on this one. Three. Four. And five. Like I say, three to five reps per side. If you're not burned out yet, we're not done yet. But at the end of this routine, feel free to repeat this or any portion of it to get that point. You want to get to a point of fatigue. And that's going to vary for everyone. So the next one we're doing, <clears throat> I call it a push-up walk-up. And for any of you that have joined any of my upper body sessions in the past, I'm not a big fan of putting forearms on the machine like a traditional plank. I prefer to be on my hands, but we're going to extend our body. So you do have to do this one on toes. I want your hands no more than shoulder width apart. And I want your shoulders above your hands. If you're, if you're too far this way or too far this way, you might get out of balance. So you just want those hands under the shoulders and it's going to minimize your head vibration too. So this one, elbows are slightly bent. We're going to hold and we're simply going to walk up. And I want you to walk back. And I would like three to five reps. Yes, it's getting hard for me to talk and breathe at the same time. Slow, controlled movements. Keep your upper body stationary. Up. Okay, one more. If you do push-ups regularly and you want to challenge yourself further, you can widen your hands up or in between your reps, feel free to actually put a push-up in there. So come down, back up. Just a little bit more. You may need to tweak this based on your range of motion and your level of conditioning. Starting to get a little winded. Can you hear me? <clears throat> so what was the next one? Okay, so I just ate a big, fabulous dinner by my lovely hosts here about 15 minutes ago. And I've got crunches in my routine today. So I'm gonna call this a V-sit. With an oscillating platform, there's two ways you can do a sit-up. So you can sit facing this way if you want destabilization this way, but you can also sit sideways on the plate. And start with, if, you, if you're sensitive to head vibration or you, you've got degenerative neck disease and think, you know things where you're sensitive from the shoulders up, you may find sitting sideways on the platform is less vibration to the head. So I'm going to do this because I can talk to you. But all we're going to do with this one is we're going to take turns lifting and extending 
back. Okay, I'm going to show you what it looks like from this angle. I want you to be, you're in a straight line from your neck to your butt. And we're just going to extend the legs out and back. And again, five to 10 reps on this. If, if you are doing crunches now and your technique is good, feel free to add, I don't know, whatever dynamic motion you want. But keep those legs moving. And make sure that you're breathing. Three to five reps. Okay. I'm sweating. Humid here. Humid here, they say. Thank you. That's so good for my ego. So again, three to five reps. If you're doing crunches regularly and you just don't find that challenging, add weights, add mass in any way, shape, or form, some hand weights, a weight vest, um, or do another set after we get through the exercises. So everybody's level of conditioning and tolerance is gonna vary. Uh, you know where you're at on this. The very last position, so position number five, is gonna be a Superman. So we've done some upper body, we've done some legs, but we wanna push some calories. We, I wanna push you to being done. So what a Superman is, it's simply a squat, and it's you can either put your arms like this, or you can extend them out in front of you. And depending on your range of motion, I want you going as deep as your range of motion allows. And just like last week, especially for so many of you dealing with hypermobility and things, I don't really want you moving up and down unless you do squats regularly. If, if you've got bad knees and things like that, holding still is going to aggravate them much, much less, but you're going to fatigue much, much faster. So I want you to just hold this till you can't hold it no more. You might look like this. You might look like this. Everybody's range is going to be a little different. Find where you feel challenged and just hold it. And I'm trying. I'm trying. I've been climbing mountains all day. Okay? You should fatigue within 45 seconds to a minute on that last squat. If you're not, make it more challenging. Add weight, add some dynamic motion, or as I said, do another rep. So if you didn't join me just from the beginning, got mosquitoes in my face, I'm just going to recap those five positions very quickly. The warm-up, feet are hip width apart. We did torso twists, tw twisting at the waist, not the legs. Three to five reps on that. The next was alternating lunges. So start with one side. This leg is straight up and down. This knee I want hitting the ground. We're going to go down. And back up down three to five reps per side switch legs okay and as i said there's going to be a strong side and there's going to be a weak side okay the very last one uh or no pardon me we did crunches next so we got into a v-sit you want a nice straight spine i don't want to see the neck lifting we're going to be straight and we're going to extend our legs Again, three to five reps, depending on you. If, if you don't like the dynamic movement, feel free to just stay in the V, but you will see those abs engaged. And it's really hard to talk if you're doing it properly. So make sure that you're breathing. And then the very last position we did, kind of that final push, was a Superman squat. So we stand again with those feet hip width apart. Wider if you're comfortable. I want your arms extended or crossed. And just go to your deep point and hold until you can't hold no more. Five moves in five minutes. Next week, I got to get in better shape because we've got a meaner session coming up next week. Um, who am I seeing here? Okay. Oh, there's a few of you here today. So hello, hello. I see now also um, Michelle from North Idaho. I see my friend Kim, of course, from uh, Houston, Texas. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? Um, I have a Facebook user. I don't have your name, but it is a very beautiful space. Thank you so much for saying so. And Kim Wilson from Campbell River, who I know has deep, deep roots in the Maritimes, but I didn't have, I couldn't get you in my, my suitcase to get you out here with me, Kim. Uh, Diana, hi, how are you doing? Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, hello from North Carolina. Hi, Suzanne, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Um, what a great turnout for a Monday. Um, I'm going to catch a, a little breath of water here. And, and if any of you do have questions, 
Oh, I see my first question. Facebook user, I don't know what your name is, but uh, can you please show me something to relieve stress in the shoulders and the neck, please? If it's just neck tension and, and, and there's nothing structurally going on, a very modified push-up is, is a good way to target those areas. Let me show you. So a modified push-up is an easy push-up, a girl-style push-up. So bring your hands closer together. Just stay on your knees and make sure that your head is just past your fingers. And just by getting the stimulation, the circulation into those areas, it doesn't need to be a mean push-up, but it's going to go a long way to relieve tension. Another way you can do it, if, if you have wrist issues or, or a traditional push-up is just a little bit hard for your body type, you can sit on the platform, take your hands, and sit on them. Tuck them right under your bum, just below where your bum meets the top of your thigh. You're getting upper body relief. This isn't what I'd call a workout, but it's, it's a passive way to get into the neck and the shoulders without having to put weight into the wrists if you've got carpal tunnel or issues like that. So just a couple examples. Thank you for asking that one. I need my glasses. Joanna. Joanna just recently got back from the chiropractor. He adjusted my hip but you have inflammation in the left hip. Will the platform help relieve that? Inflammation's a tricky one. Um, yes, absolutely, circulation and getting some lymph moving would probably be a good idea, but I would sort of stay away from anything strenuous, weight, like big squats and lunges, until you've got the inflammation under control. I don't know what you're taking for the inflammation, but perhaps just sitting on the platform if range allows. Joanna's a really good one to do. The lunges are a good strength exercise, but if you're dealing with that inflammation, I wouldn't do anything that aggressive yet. So if range of motion allows, just try having a seat on it, two to three minutes. When you're sitting on the platform, we got a little more padding. So I would say like a, a mid to high speed would probably be very comfortable. And just lean forward slightly. If you're sitting straight up and down, you tend to get a little bit more head vibe. So just lean forward a little bit and I think you'll find it very tolerable. Um, I'm not sure what your name is, but you're anxiously awaiting the arrival of your platform. Um, that's very exciting news. What I will say, there, there's a lot of beginner videos. If you're a new user to Whole Body Vibration, I encourage you, A, to reach out to Life Pro and make sure that you register your warranty. Once you register your warranty, you'll also get access to the VIP group. So there's the main Life Pro page. Some of you are seeing me on today, but some of you are joining me on the VIP group. It's a private group existing members. It's a really good place to exchange ideas. And there's a whole gamut of, of video tutorials in there. Um, and don't overdo it. Less is more when you're first starting out. Doesn't mean you have to go the full 10 minutes, uh, especially if you're dealing with health issues. So keep us posted. And if you do have any questions after you've gotten started, please feel free to come back and just tag me in the video and I'll answer any questions that you might have. Congratulations. I'm glad you're taking the plunge. Joanna, thank you. She will do that. Um, let me know how it goes, Joanna. You know, there's a bazillion ideas I can give you for the neck and the shoulders, but sometimes you got to experiment and see what works best for you. Facebook user, what's the best program to lose weight? <clears throat> there's never a best program or setting or speed. With weight loss, it, it's really critical to understand kind of how our body burns calories. And the best exercises on the machine are gonna be the exercises that engage the big group of muscles, the glutes, the quads. So things like those lunges, squats, um, and pushing yourself to fatigue is gonna be the best way, not only to burn calories, but if you're post 40 like me and the metabolism is tanking a little bit, try and get those exercises done early in the day. Even if you're just doing a set of legs or three to five minutes of squats, it's gonna elevate your metabolism so that throughout the course of the day, there's, there's idle calories being burned, passive calories. So you're by raising your metabolism throughout the course of the day, you're assisting in that weight loss journey. And if, if you've lost a lot of weight, and sometimes the skin takes a little bit longer than, than the weight loss itself. So some of the massage sessions and, and some of the applications where you apply the body directly is a really good way to, you know, target the skin tone and tighten things up if you've experienced excessive weight loss. Um, hello, Rita from uh, Careville, Texas. I'm sure it's nice and warm there today. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, best program for, is, is there any other questions that folks have for me today? I wish you could all be here joining me later for a cocktail. It's so beautiful. Um, let me see here. Did I, I just want to make sure I didn't miss any of you. 
Joanna just got recent. Oh, and I was going to go, yeah, jo Joanna, if you've just had a recent adjustment, um, you know, you might want to be conservative, you know, three to five minutes on that seated position and see how you feel tomorrow. When you're dealing with inflammation and aches and pains, the best way to use your platform is as you need it throughout the day, your body's going to give you triggers, symptoms arise. So instead of it being a 10 minute thing or once a day, you know, break your time into two to three minutes as a feel good application or a therapeutic treatment versus a workout, especially when you're dealing with inflammation. Um, hello, Fran. You got for about a week ago. You love it. Low and slow for me as I have fibro and getting uh, medical meniscus surgery on Thursday. Um, I hope. Okay. So I'm assuming that's on a knee. What I would suggest, Fran, low is actually not your friend. The slow speeds are very choppy, very wobbly, kind of like a BOSU ball. But what's critical, especially if you're dealing with any kind of joint or inflammation in the knees, bring the feet closer, even if they're dead center as a starting point, and crank that puppy up to a mid to high speed. What you'll find as you get going faster, it's smoother, it's less choppy. And um, I think you'll find it's a much better experience. If you've got surgery coming up on Thursday, you've only got a couple of days, but any increase in circulation and lymph that you can help um, prep that joint pre-surgery, you're, you're going to have a better surgery. So I would recommend seated positions if, you know, sitting on a stool, if you want to go longer, but if you are able to stand and you're comfortable two to three minutes at a time and do it a couple times throughout the day versus a big, long duration. Um, hello, Pam, Pam, my girl from the UK. How are you? Uh, any tips for angry psoriasis muscle? Psoriasis muscle. I'm drawing a blank. Tell, tell me where that's at, Pam. I'm thinking in your hip and my psoriasis muscle. I don't want to have to Google it, but I might have to. Give me a moment. I will be the first to admit when I don't know the answer to a question. Psoriasis. But now I got to figure out how to spell it. Hang on. Pam, I love how you keep me on your toes. Hang on here. No. Okay, two sex. That's what Dr. Google's for. One second. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's in the hips. Um, have you had a tear? Is it inflammation? T tell me why you want to treat that area. So any tips on an angle? So I'm assuming it's inflamed. Um, just standing on the platform and maybe some light pelvic tilts, just if, if you're tight and it's pain that you're experiencing. So let me show you. The muscle Pam's talking about sort of connects up in the top here and it goes all the way through your hip joint and it comes down into the groin. So what you want to do with this one, feet are very close. You want a mid to high speed and the pelvic tilt is just tilting it forward. Hold for two to three seconds. Tilt it back two to three seconds. Just get some movement going in there. If you want to stretch it, Pam, Try something like this where you got one foot on the machine, one foot on the ground, and just depending on your range of, and you'll feel, try and stay straight, don't lean forward, but you'll feel that pull in that lower part of that muscle area in the groin, only to your range of motion. For those of you that are old like me, we used to be taught like you bounce to do the stretch. No, just go as, as far as you feel comfortable and just hold it. And what you'll find with the plate, you'll probably increase in range of motion a little bit, but just give it three to five seconds, do another rep. And I'm not sure what your range of motion is like with what you're dealing with, Pam. I think we've talked in previous sessions, but even just seated on the platform will give some relief and some circulation to those areas. Um, and give me a tip back, make a comment back here. Cause a lot of times people will come back and see if Debbie did it right or if Debbie did it wrong. So if it's not working out for you, make a comment and we can always switch gears and try something else. Just keep me posted on that, Pam. I think you might be part of my group as well. So you have extra access to me. Fran Davidson. Gotcha. Thank you. I understand. <laughs> okay. That's good. Just as long as you do. Fran Davidson also, I'm doing both now standing and seated. Good for you, Fran. Really the, the biggest key with these machines, like anything else, is consistency. You know, sometimes it's not about how much you're working out or how little it's, it's regular use that just keeps the good stuff flowing. So consistency is the key. Um, so, uh, so I hope that I answered that Michelle on the, on that Pam is telling me spine to groin via hips. So it, it's affecting you quite a bit. I think you'll like those pelvic tilts. What I don't want you doing Pam is if the range of motion is 
questionable and you're not trusting yourself, it's always easier to get down than up. So if, if, if you struggle now getting up off the floor, I don't want you putting yourself in a situation where you, you, you might overdo it. So try standing and see if you get some relief that way. Um, 28 free at last, uh, is your name. So just starting out where to begin. If, if you're looking for a starting tutorial, I suggest you go back into some, it's kind of a whole conversation in itself. And it really depends. Everybody's starting from a different place. So where you physically are beginning and, and depending on what your goals are, go into some of the introductory exercises or message some of the folks on the page with what type of platform you're starting with. And they can give you a little bit more detail on, on a getting started, depending on what goals. When you say getting started without knowing the goals and what body we're dealing with, it's really not a black and white answer. I wish I could give you that. Uh, Pam, Brill, thanks. And uh, Facebook user, awesome. Thanks. Well, I, I've rambled about 30 minutes and it was supposed to be five moves in five minutes. I know I never do five minutes, but again, for those of you that are just joining me late, if, if you didn't find this terribly challenging or you've got better cardio than some of us and you want to do a second or third set, the whole goal behind the, the, the last this week and next week is to keep it simple. You know, it's easier to get into a habit of five or six exercises than 20 or 30. So consistency is the key. And, and as you progress, do other reps, extend your durations. Once you've gotten to about the two minute mark, if you're able to bang these off in, in, in two minutes, no problem, you need to evolve and make the exercises a little bit more challenging. So I encourage you to join me next Monday when we do the advanced level um, and, and progress things a little bit further. Um, I have a waiver 55 and want to lose some weight and tone. Okay, so um, waiver is just a little bit bigger than what I'm dealing with. The biggest tip I can give you if weight loss is the goal, squats and lunges. Those, those exercises that are going to engage the glutes, the quads. And um, if, you, if you're like me and you're, you're definitely plus 40, earlier in the day, elevate that metabolism. And it doesn't have to be a big exotic program. Two or three very good exercises focus on technique and consistency with that. Um, and if you're just starting with a weight, the waiver is the most common, most popular model. It is an oscillating platform. Um, there's a, like I say, a number of tutorial videos specifically to the waiver. I recommend checking a few of those out. We all have a tendency. We get it out of the box. We run it 10 minutes. We just want to make sure that you're, you're not overdoing it your first time out. So check out some of those other tutorials and within the Facebook groups, you'll also see all of the videos that Amber, Roseanne and I have done. Um, you, you, you'll have hours and hours to drink. Today's a little bit advanced if you're just starting out. Hello, Mary Liz. How are you? I think I'm catching the tail end. Looking forward to watching the replay. You know, then you can fast forward through my ramblings. That's the best part, Marilyn. Um, and next week as well. So if, if you don't follow Life Pro now, for those of you that are joining from my page where I always remind you and nag you, follow Life Pro or the VIP page if you're an existing member and you'll automatically get notifications um, about these lives. And there's several a week between the three of us, different topics, lots of variety. But if you, if you're, many of you sometimes message me that I missed it or I didn't know about about it. I share through my pages, but because this is primarily hosted by Life Pro, you want to make sure you follow their page and you'll get the notifications on the lives as they come up. Um, last chance, if anybody wants to blast me, I, I might leave you be on your Monday evening. And, and I thank you for those of you that are joining me uh, on Monday. It's, it's, a, it's a long start to the week. Where do you find the replay? As soon as this ends, it will be a video on the page. So right now, because we're live, you can't rewind it or, or go back and forth. But the minute that I end this, you'll see it as a video ready to go. And the title today is Five Moves in Five Minutes. And we're doing the intermediate session today. Uh, Mary Liz, replaying to Mary Liz, thanks for the tip about following the Life Pro page. I'm in a few places, so that's usually the easiest place to, like I say, not just find my sessions, but you'll see Roseanne and Amber's there as well, especially for a lot of the introductory videos to the platform. Amber's been doing this for a very, very long time, and you'll you'll find a lot of variety under her, her album. So I hope that's good. It's almost 30 minutes, so I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your Monday evening. Um, thank you for joining me in my beautiful background today, and I'll surprise you next week. I might be in New Brunswick. I might be in a campground. You never know, but I will see you on Monday at same time, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, 
3.30 Pacific time. And next week's going to be a mean one. So please come at the very least spectate. And uh, I look forward to beating you guys next next week. Have a great week and don't work too hard.